Hi there guys, Tom Quayle here. Hope you're all doing very well out there as ever. Today I'm checking out a brand new product from the guys at Boss. This is the RV200. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the features, who might be interested in this pedal, how I've got it set up, check out some of the tones. So let's get straight to it. So as I mentioned, this is the RV200 from Boss. So obviously it's a reverb, and part of their 200 series. So the 200 series basically represents, like think of a Boss compact pedal, you know, the Super Overdrive, you know, whatever you think of. And this is sort of the same size, but has a lot of the power from the bigger 500 series built in. What's cool about that is that you have this instant access kind of knob per function design. So you've got that kind of um, aesthetic, if you like, and functionality from the compact series. But actually, there's an extraordinary amount of power available and sort of deep dive if you want to get into tonal sculpting and kind of control over all the parameters that you can do with the 200 series. So, like the rest of the 200 series, it's got 12 different algorithms built in. So, you know, that gives you a wide array of different reverb sounds, but again, in a compact format. So when you look at the device itself, you've got this main dial here, which allows you to select between the 12 different reverbs. Now there are two completely brand new reverb algorithms here that you won't find on any other Boss products. So we've got the ARP mode, and we've also got the modulation mode, which is gonna give us kind of like a chorusing effect within the reverb, and it's actually really beautiful as well. Other than that, we've got all of the standard things like rooms, halls, plates, but we've got some kind of staples of modern reverb, so shimmer on there, reverse, um, you know, delay as well. So there's a delay functionality built in. So you can actually leave your delay at home and have an even smaller pedal board, which is nice. So that's what that main dial does. Directly underneath there, we've got a density switch, which is basically, if you imagine having like a hall, for example, changes the kind of size and thickness of the space, if you like, so those reflections coming back. So that's a nice feature, just really easily, again, sort of knob per function, as I mentioned, just increase that using the button. Really nice kind of LED graphical interface on there to show you uh, how much density you've got. And then we've got all the controls you would expect from a reverb pedal. So time, pre-delay, we've got the effect level, then we've got a parameter control, the parameter control is really quite interesting because dependent on which algorithm you've got selected, the parameter control will control different things. So for example, on the room and the hall, it's gonna change the, if you like, size of the space or type of space that we're in. With the plate, for example, it's actually going to change the high and low cutoff that you've got um, within the reverb. Um, and for the shimmer, it's gonna control like the harmonic density of the shimmer. So at the, when it's turned all the way right, you'll get a brighter, more cutting shimmer sound. Turn it all the way left, you'll get less harmonics and it'll be a duller, smoother kind of shimmer. So depending on what you, which reverb algorithm you're on, the parameter will do different things. And then we've got low and high. So obviously you've got tonal shaping there. What I like about the low and the high is if you watch when I control them just here, we get negative values so we can attenuate or we get positive values so we can boost the low and the high, which is what you need for reverb, depending on what the application you're using is. Underneath there, we've got a memory switch, which allows us to select by default from one of four presets or the manual mode. Now those presets actually extend from four all the way up to 128, so standard MIDI protocol. And those can be accessed either via a MIDI controller because the RV200 has full MIDI implementation with in, out, and the out doubles as a through as well. So you can send that MIDI signal through to other pedals also. But you can actually use the memory button just down here to switch between those presets as well. And you can set it up so you can switch between any of the presets. So you could have a different start and end point from one to four, for example. You could go from one to 128, or you could go from I don't know, five to 15, whatever you need basically from the pedal, which is really, really nice. So we also have a small LED display here, which will display any relevant parameters. Now you can get very deep divey with this if you want. This actually does function as a kind of pseudo menu system. But what I like about the RV200 series is if you don't want to deep dive, you can just use the dials on the front panel to get in there, just like again, a Boss Compact pedal and kind of you know dial in the sound you want. But unlike a Boss Compact pedal, you have access to those presets and the MIDI functionality as well, which is really, really nice. The switch here is obviously a bypass switch and then the memory slash hold, the reason it says slash hold is because that foot switch also has quite a lot of other functionality that can be assigned to it. So for example, by default, it's a hold. 
So if you hold it down, it will actually hold the signal like a freeze button, if you like. But you can do what you, um, you know, a lot of BOSS products allow you to do these days, which is assign it to things like twist, um, you know, a bunch of different functionalities. So it could be a momentary switch to turn the reverb off on for a single note, for example. It could move between the presets. There's a bunch of different functionality and that can all be accessed via this display here and by holding these two buttons down. Uh, it's really, really deep. There's a lot of functionality you can get into here. In terms of I.O., We've got stereo in, stereo out. I'll talk a little bit more about my, how my signal chain is running because it's slightly more unusual, but very interesting. So stereo in, stereo out. We also have a, a, a foot switch uh, input here, if you like, or output, depending on which way you think of it. So you can have two foot switches and an expression pedal. Now that means that you can assign a multitude of different functions to each of those controllers and the expression pedal. So for example, you could use the expression pedal to control the time, and then you could use one of the foot switches to do uh, another function that's not assigned to this foot switch here, basically. So that's quite nice. You could switch between presets, for example. There is a USB on there as well for doing firmware updates. And talking of firmware updates, the internals of this unit are really, really powerful, like you'll find with BOSS stuff generally these days. So it is 32-bit floating point, 96 kilohertz, you know, top spec digital stuff going on here. And in terms of the DSP, you can also have carryover for when you switch presets or when you actually uh, you know, turn the unit on or off in terms of bypass. So very powerful indeed. So without further ado, we should definitely check out some tones. Before I show you the tones, what I wanna do is talk a little bit about how I've got this set up because it is a little unusual, but I think this is a really flexible way of doing things. So I've actually got it in kill dry mode. So the dry signal is not coming out of here at all. You can, of course, run it as a wet-dry setup if you wanted to. So you could send the wet signal out one side and the dry signal out the other. Or you could run it as a standard kind of pedal on a pedal board setup in mono or stereo if you've got two amps, and it works great that way. So from a compact pedal, that's pretty powerful as a starting point. That's fantastic. What I'm doing is I'm taking a pair of outputs of my audio interface and running into the inputs in stereo and then taking a stereo output from the RV200 back into one of the inputs on my audio interface. And that means I can run any of my amps or my synths or whatever into this via the audio interface and use it as a full range outboard hardware reverb device, which is incredibly powerful. Similar to how I was running the um, SDE 3000 pedal uh, that, you know, I did a demo of uh, recently. I'll put a link to that down below so you guys can check that out. And this makes this a fantastic hardware outboard reverb unit that's running in stereo with full range effects, which is fantastic. So my setup that you're hearing, here is the tone. That is my Marshall Plex, it's not a Marshall, but it's kind of a Plexi style amp that I built. You might be able to see it just in the top corner of the room over there. Uh, and that's a 50 watt head, which is running into a, a Zilla 2x12 cab in a separate room, mic'd up with a Royal 121 and an SM57. And that's coming into the studio here, and I'm hearing it through the studio monitors and a little bit of bleed. But when I turn on the reverb, I've routed the mic's output from the audio interface into the RV200. So again, here's the dry sound. Let's turn the RV200 on. And we've got just a room reverb with a 3.3 second kind of reverb on there. And sounds fantastic. I'm going to switch pickups so there's less noise. That is just my studio is just noisy, guys. Sorry about that. That is not the pedal, as you can hear. OK, so immediately really lovely dense, realistic sounding reverbs running in stereo. It's absolutely awesome. And I can route any of my gear through this now, which is a fantastic setup. So first things first, let's just play with this density control. We're gonna roll this all the way down to zero. Okay, you can hear it's a thinner sound, which is basically continuing for a significant amount of time, obviously our 3.3 seconds. If we put this halfway, there's a little bit more kind of girth to the sound if we increase it all the way. So you, it's an easier thing to hear than it is to describe. Okay, density with reverb. Reverb is one of these things where every manufacturer of a reverb pedal or a plug-in or whatever has different words for different things. There's some standards like pre-delay, but density might be, it's a descriptive term for an audio quality. So again, just listen. 
Okay, so it's a very useful control to have. Obviously, that's going to function slightly differently depending on which reverb you have. Okay, just show you the controls really quickly and then we'll do the 12 different algorithms, okay? So the time obviously increases the amount of time of the reverb, and this will change depending on which algorithm you're using. So for the room, we can go pretty long, all the way up to 10 seconds. So if I increase the effect level a little bit here, okay, so if I do this, really pretty, just sits there beautifully in the background, but not too much, it's not overbearing. Let's bring the time back. You can hear this is clicking. It's a ratcheted control, which makes it much easier to dial in the time that you need. Let's go back to around four seconds. Okay, now the pre-delay. Sorry, I'm kind of blocking this at the same time as you're seeing it. Pre-delay obviously is the amount of time between the dry signal and the delay coming in. This basically gives us a, a kind of clean, a transient at the beginning of the note, and then the delay will kick in, and it can make a room space seem bigger as well. So that does exactly what you'd expect. Effect level, in my case, this is basically literally an effect level because it's not a mix control here. So it's the amount of signal I'm sending back. In a standard setup, you, this would be the mix between the dry and the wet signal. So if it was on a pedal board, for example. And then the parameter, which we'll get to in a second, and then low and high. So let's start with the highs. Let's boost them all the way up. <laughs> attenuate them for a kind of darker, denser sound. Okay, and then the same with the lows, if we pull those back out. sound really nice. You can you hear how much that's fattened up that low end now? Very pretty indeed. So those are the basic controls. Let's set everything back to zero or near to it. Now the parameter here, let's start with the room. So if I move the parameter all the way to the left, you can see we're getting different types of room reverb. And that's indicated by the change just here. So now we're on small. You can hear it's a slightly different sound. Medium. It's a lot bigger, the sound. All the way over to large. Great sounding reverb. So let's switch back to the medium setting and we'll check out the hall. So if I switch across, you can see it's indicated that there's a hall now. Okay, so if we switch back to a small hall. And then the large hall. Again, beautiful sounding reverbs. Next up is our plate. Classic plate sound, much more shrill. So if we pull out some of the high end, and we also have the parameter control here, if we pull back on this, we get less high end and more low end. 
And if we continue back further. Again, sits beautifully. Go all the way over to the right now. And again, more high end. Very useful indeed. As we come around here, we've got our spring. Now in this case, the parameter control is gonna control the number of springs. So all the way to the left is gonna give us a single spring. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> it sounds really boingy and springy. Now let's increase to three springs. That's pretty cool. I almost feel like I should shake it and the springs will kind of move. Pretty authentic, I would say. That's not very cool indeed. And then the shimmer. Now, I think that this is one of Boss's nicest sounding shimmers. It may be a complete placebo by this. It might be the same algorithm as in the RV500. I don't know if they've updated it, but I think it sounds really great. Now, again, in this case, the parameter control here going to increase the time, is going to change the harmonic kind of frequencies present within the shimmer. So if I move to a slightly better pickup here. What I hear a lot with shimmers that I don't like is pitch aliasing, where it kind of warbles. It's not stable, the pitch here. And in this case, it's super stable sound. That is fantastic. So my favorite is when you back off and it becomes really smooth. I think that is fantastic, a really, really nice shimmer. If we continue, we've got the ARP mode. Now this is unique to the RV200 and very interesting indeed. The parameter control here is gonna change the attack of the arpeggiated notes. Uh, and this gives something like a reverb effect I've never heard before. You listen to the... This to me is one of those sounds that you hear on synths a lot uh, because you can change the pitch of the different oscillators. Now, I've never heard this on a guitar particularly before and it works really great for kind of short notes and then you let the reverb do its thing. Now, as we increase the parameter control here, check this out, this is really pretty. Feel like I'm in some kind of like fantasy movie. Really pretty. I'm just going to increase the level just a little bit. Got to be a little bit careful when you play chords because obviously you've got those intervals. I think it's a fifth that's happening above and below. Sorry. <laughs> so let's switch over to the next one, which is the slow verb. Now in this case, the parameter control affects how much dry signal there is. So I need to roll this one all the way back because I've got it in wet dry. Not wet dry, kill dry. Let's increase the effect level a little bit. That's a really interesting sounding reverb. I don't know exactly what slow verb means, but it's a very interesting sound with quite a lot of density and it's, it's a, a very pretty sound that kind of sits out the way until you need it. Really, really nice. 
Next, we're on to modulate. This is one of my favorites because I love anything that's got chorus in, especially delays and reverbs. So the parameter here is gonna change the amount of modulation. So in the initial setting all the way to the left here, it's a pretty reverb, but there isn't actually any modulation. But, as if by magic, as I increase the parameter control, there it starts to come in. Really pretty. It makes you play in a kind of different way. It's really, really nice. And it's not over the top either. It's not like full on kind of 80s shroop going on. It just sounds great. Really, really nice. Then we've got the plus delay mode. So this obviously adds delay. And a very pretty delay it is as well. It's not kind of like a super, super kind of crispy digital delay, although you can do that. It's got some character. <laughs> So again here, I can control the highs and the lows using the EQ. And then the time is gonna be controlled via the time here. So almost like slapback going on, really, really nice. Now we've got lo-fi. This one I struggle with a little bit because it's adding in some kind of over, well not overdrive, like distortion to the signal. So on guitar I'm struggling with this one, but this would be great to grunge up synths or to grunge up drums, for example. That would work really, really well. But again, you might find a fantastic use for it in your kind of guitar setup. But you can hear what it's doing. So again, it's nice to have it there. Gate into full on 80s territory. There we go, exactly what you need. And the parameter control here is gonna change the attenuation level of the gate. Roll all the way to the right. We're getting almost nothing. And then if it's all the way to the left. There we go, so really, really useful. And then finally, we've got our reverse reverb. Which does clip, unfortunately, if I don't have the level attenuated a little bit, so apologies for that, let me do that again. It's because if you listen to it, it's very resonant. It's got resonant peaks in it that weren't present in the other reverbs. And in this case, the parameter is functioning as a high cut, basically, so you can remove some of the highs from the signal path. And that is basically it. I mean, it's pretty powerful and it's very compact. And it, to me, it sounds fantastic, especially running in stereo like this. But of course, like I mentioned before, you can run this in your pedal board in a standard kind of mono setup or as wet dry, or you can run it in stereo, whatever you need to do. And again, having that power from such a small pedal that can be powered via a standard nine volt, I'm just using a standard Boss nine volt power supply here. That's awesome, really, really, really cool. So there we have it, guys. That is the RV200 from the guys at Boss. Again, hitting it out of the park, that's fantastic. It joins the rest of the 200 series and gives you a huge amount of power from a very, very small pedal. It's also got a very low power drawer as well, which means that you can actually power it from three AA batteries, which is awesome. 
you get about four hours of life from those uh, batteries. So really, really nice feature again. So very powerful, very compact, nicely affordable as well. And uh, you know, if you want a deep dive, you can. If you don't, just use the knob per function and you're good to go, essentially. So as usual, guys, you will find a link in the description below where you can go across to Boss's website and check out all the details on the RV200. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. And of course, if you want to support me in what I do, check out the links below and you'll find links to all the lessons and of course my app solo as well. Any support would be appreciated. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.